Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk a little bit about Pine Time. And this is the clock that I have wear on my watch. I bought one and I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to develop for it. And first off, I want to say that if you are thinking about uh, buying a watch, there is a lot of watch manufacturers out there, buy a Rolex, uh, Siemens or uh, Sieco or an Apple watch or something like that. If you would not need an accessory, buy any of those. If you need a computer on your wrist, buy a Samsung or anything else that has Android Wear on it because this is not a good watch and it's not a really good uh, smartwatch either but it's a very good development platform it's an interesting one and before I get a few questions about this if you're interested I have a little patch up here and the only thing I can say about that is wear sunscreen if you're going outside so let's continue here and uh, let's switch over to my screen here first off I want to show you the uh, Pine time here we have the watch and this is what I bought it cost about 27 uh, uh, US dollars and then it cost at least as much to get it to ship to Sweden and at least as much in taxes in Sweden in order to get it in my hands but it's it, as I was interested in the project I thought it was worth uh, investing in and uh, so if you want a smart torch don't buy this uh, but it's not that expensive but it doesn't really have that much functionality uh, if we look at the specific clock it has uh, some memory uh, 512 flash uh, 64k ram it has bluetooth communication both a low energy and normal uh, it has an accelerator, accelerometer and a heart sensor and that's one of the things I want to talk about today and it can also vibrate so we can get messages and feel them and it has a pretty good battery. I think I will be able to run the clock for a week before I um, need to charge it again. I played a lot with it now and I think I used 30% of the battery already but that is under heavy use. So if we look at the project here, this Infinitime, they have a bunch of releases. So these are the clock faces that you see today. You have the normal clock faces on the right hand side here. Then you see that you have a step goal that you can set and also a stopwatch. Those are some of the functionality. If we go up here we can see that we can set the beat and there are some small games on this phone as well but it's pretty rudimentary there is a companion app that you can use either in iOS or Android for this which is pretty good as well I think this is the this is the gadget bridge that I use on Android I can get some information there. This is a new clock face that they uh, produced. I, I'm not really fond of this clock face. I don't think the, it adds extra information from the earlier ones I used to that. But if you like this one, you can use that. Uh, and they have some games as well. So I'm running the latest here, 1.3.0. Um, some things that I noticed was that the clock actually disconnect uh, quite a lot uh, so every day pretty much I have to reset the, the, the clock in order to get it to connect again I think this is some bug that you need to look into you see that they have over a hundred issues here so there is a lot of things that you can help out with and look into in order to uh, take the project forward but I was interested in the heart sensor because uh, measuring the pulse is not that hard and uh, if you are doing it yourself you're just holding over one of your or order or hold over one one of your veins and then feeling the uh, uh, pulsation and you count it up uh, for a minute if you want to be precise and then you get your pulse 
and I have a pulse when I'm lying in bed between 56 to 60 or something like that and it produced results 150 to 212 when I actually were swimming a lot as a child I never came above 200 uh, beats per minute so that's not a correct reading uh, so I looked into the uh, heart rate sensor here and what it was doing it is actually shining a green uh, diode light on your skin and then reading the result that comes back from that diode and this heart rate sensor is used in a lot of different uh, soft uh, different hardware things that is on the market so i don't think it's any problem with this actual sensor i think it's how it's implemented and used that might be a problem here uh, first off in the specification they say that you should read five readings and then take a mean of that which is not done uh, it also states that are uh, that it can be used in light circumstances and dim light circumstances and there is uh, a lot of information here but they have information about the output of the light which could be uh, all between uh, 12 and a half milliamps to 40 milliamps so you can set a register there to get a brighter light and then you also have how often the light should actually cycle and at the moment they have set it at 12 and a half milliseconds and 20 um, uh, amps which uh, makes it uh, flicker really qu uh, quite fast and perhaps you can't really measure uh, good in that flicker maybe you need some other setting depending on your light and your surrounding so I think a good thing to do here is actually try these out, also have a mean calculation and so on in your code in order to get a better uh, implementation. Uh, so that was something that I wanted to look into. If we look at the main code where this all started, it's actually written in Python because there is uh, something called WASP OS that is also able to run on the device it doesn't have this companion app and so on but it's written in python because daniel thompson thought it was fun to run write something in python that can run on these devices and it works but it's a little bit more rud rudimentary uh, but he has written something for this heart monitoring here and we see that it cycles between 12 and a half milliseconds and with 20 amperes drive uh, so enable that there and it also sets some power on magic uh, from the data sheet and he thinks that it doesn't give a really good result here uh, he also has set it in the 16-bit mo mode that might be the issue that we don't read the value correctly in C and he also has some gain here and here you have the uh, Python code, we have some initialization here, we have code to read and write the registries, we have some code to enable and disable, and then we read from the heart monitor here and get back the different values from the registries. And you see here that you get one value from the me, uh, M registry, you get one value from the H registry, and then you switch those over and then you take some information from the uh, L registry and uh, read that um, in, in some weird way here. So reading up on how to actually read these values correctly is something that I want to look into. And then you can read the ALS, which is another flag. Uh, and then you have gain, set the gain and set to drive. So that's the Python code. If we look at the C code, we see here that we have similar in it here. We have similar information for reading, enabling and disabling. We have the reading of the registry here and also the same uh, information here for switching the registries to read the heart rate sensor and another for reading the ALS, whatever that is, and then setting the gain and drive and so on. So the, the code is pretty, 
no, I won't say easy, but it's approachable. So if you are good at Python or if you're good at C, you should be able to, uh, or C++, you should be able to uh, go into this code and figure out what should be correct by the specification and then try to make some changes here. So my thing that I want to look into here is, uh, first off, I will report the uh, bad results that I get and talk a little bit about what I think could be changes that we can do and start a discussion. It's always good to start a discussion. Then I would go in and do some changes to the code and see if I can debug or change values in order to get my clock, clock to be more accurate. Um, so this is a, a project that I'm working on at the moment and I'm really hyped about what the potential of this project is. There could be a lot of interesting use cases for this. The clock has a, a function that you can export the information saved on the clock. It doesn't really have that much memory, so it can't hold uh, a lot months of data on it. It only has a brief um, view of time and so on. But if you export that regularly, you should be able to uh, create uh, statistics about your heart rate or about how many steps you walk and so on. Um, the companion app can also send notifications to the clock and the clock can send uh, battery information and so on back to the companion app. So this is what I wanted to talk about today. It's a little bit of a look into this infinite time or pine time and how it uh, functions, what is available in it. The code in uh, Pine Time is not that large. Uh, I think compiled the binary that you send over is 300k. So it's a really small binary. It's not that much code. So getting in and looking at different parts should be also pretty approachable. Uh, in this case, when it comes to the heart rate monitor, you had that file that I looked at now for setting specific values and so on. You had one other file to doing the calculation where they actually read it. And then you had a service file to keep the service going if you are not in the application. So it's not that much code. Uh, it's uh, a couple of five, let's say, say with header files and everything, it's about 10 files. So it's not that much code. Um, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'm really interested to see, to hear about your thoughts about this clock. Are you excited about th something that you can be a part of Im implementing in an open source way? Uh, if you have any suggestion on other things that could be wrong with this heart rate sensor or other thoughts on how to improve it, leave those in the comment section down below as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.